What's up, NBA fans? What's up, all sports fans? What's up, NBA fans? What's up, all sports fans? What's up, NBA fans? What's up, all sports fans? This is JB of the Behind the Bench channel, the Behind the Bench network, the Behind the Bench crew. I want to talk about some NBA, the National Basketball Association. And over the past 10 years or so, there's been a lot of discussion about this dynamic and this creation called the super team, the NBA super team. And when it started, the origins of it, whether it's been a good thing for the NBA or a detriment to the NBA, and it really depends on one's point of reference, which often determines what they feel about the whole concept of the super team. Now, as a lifelong NBA fan, <clears throat> watching the NBA professional basketball, basically since the late 70s, and I've been watching basketball in every decade, late 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and the 2010s. And me personally, as I look back on history, we've had all-time great teams, all-time championship squads, and all-time dynasties. But there's something that really stands out about the super team that's in direct contrast to those three levels of performance in terms of championship team, dynastic team. And those teams in the past, when you start thinking about the 60 Celtics, the 70s Knicks, and then, of course, the Showtime Los Angeles Lakers of the 80s and the Celtics of the 80s, the bad boy Detroit Pistons of the late 80s, and then the Chicago Bulls of the, the 1990s. And then you had a San Antonio Spurs team who won five championships from 1999 up until 2014. So we're talking about over a 15-year period. Those teams I mentioned, even the teams that were very successful and may have either won a single championship or may have failed short of winning a championship. But the difference between the NBA super team of today versus those teams I, I'm referring to, those teams had long-standing runs. Because in order to be a dynasty, you really have to succeed over – a 10 year period. A long standing run, like let's say like the uh, bad boy Detroit Pistons, you know, they they really start their ascension, let's say from anywhere from 1984 up until they ended their championship run in 91. So we're talking about eight years. Or if you want to talk about the Houston Rockets of the 90s with the Kim Olajuwon leading the way, you know, for the most part, their run started from 86, you know, with um, then Akeem Olajuwon and Ralph Sampson leading the way where they advanced to the finals in 1986 during Akeem's second year in the league. But the Houston Rockets were a prime contender for the better part of 10 years. Then we can look at teams like the Dallas Mavericks with Dirk Nowitzki, who was a playoff level team, a contender for the better part of 10 years, and in Dirk Nowitzki's, I believe, his 13th season, he went on to claim his first championship. But today's super team lacks that longevity, and when you really look at it, when you look at all these teams that feature multiple superstars, you know, stacking the deck, you know, in this era of so-called player empowerment also, those teams – 
really last for three years. For three years, and then they start to unfold and unravel by year four. Because what happens is, and I'm going to be uh, expounding on this in uh, uh, future videos talking about the super team and the history of it, and when I believe it, it started. But in the grand scheme of things, when you go that route of stacking the deck, well, you're really going against the custom of how true championship teams or longstanding teams are, are constructed and built. And you're really acting against the long-term success of your team, of your franchise. Because think about it. A super team really is an anomaly and it's not a natural concept. That's why they call it a super team. So the connotation is this is something beyond custom and this is something that is extreme in nature. You see what I'm saying? So when you look at it, in order to pair three superstars on the same team, well, the first thing that you have to forego is depth. And when you go that route, players start having to adapt outside of their natural role on the team. And things get overlapped in terms of play. And if you notice, these so-called super teams have the highest degree of player turnover. Do you notice that? Whereas a long-standing team, yes, on a yearly basis, you know, you may draft in a, a new player. Even if you win a championship, a team will draft a player to keep keep the team moving forward. Then you're going to make a tweak to the lineup. Usually you bring someone in to help elevate the bench and improve the bench. That's normal. But the super team, a lot of times you overhold the entire roster. And then instead of and, and if you notice the super team, it really consists of top heavy players and veterans, older veterans, and you wind up having less and less drafted players on the roster. Because a lot of times those drafted players are used to flip around and bring in those superstar players. So really, for a super team to exist, you have to take away from your team to make it happen. And that's the downside of it in the grand scheme of things. That's the downside of the uh, super team. Um, you don't see that dynamic in baseball. You may have dominant teams. There's nothing wrong with a dominant team. If you if you draft in, if, if if your team constitutes majority drafted players and you want to dominate for a long period of time, well, th that's that's what you want to achieve. And you can dominate for a long period of time by going through that natural uh, evolution of uh, uh, building a, a championship laden roster for a long period of time. But the super team, you don't really see it in football. Because it's, you know, with uh, with so many uh, attempts to create parity in the NFL, yes, you have successful teams, and you may have dominant positional players, but you always feel that going into each season that you have a large number of teams who can compete for a Super Bowl championship. You don't see that as much doing this super team explosion in the NBA of the past decade or so. So I just want to touch on that real quick and I will be elaborating on, on this whole concept and, you know, what I think about it um, and what I think it has led to and what we see today in the NBA. But when you look at the history of this league, Let me put it this way. The super team, contrary to the commentary of today, the super team didn't start in the 50s. The super team didn't start in the 60s. The super team didn't start in the 70s, nor did it start in the 80s or 90s or 2000s. So I'm going to leave it at that. And I will be expounding on this experience of, of watching the uh, super team uh, take place and 
uh, remain constant in this current uh, NBA landscape and uh, and what's coming of it and what it has resulted in. So I just want to drop that nugget real quick. And um, this is JB for Behind the Bench. And like I say, I'll be doing future uh, uh, videos uh, centering around this uh, subject. But I'll holler later.